Welcome to the session on um, aspiring entrepreneurs. Happy to have you here. We're going to have a panel, uh, an interactive panel, and Julie's done one with me before, so you can interrupt each other or ask questions to each other. Or be, we, they, she sang actually at the last one. If you, if you, uh, any of you were there, so, so I'm actually um, going not going to read long introductions about each of them because my first question will give you an opportunity to kind of tell your story. But I'm excited to be able to have Susan Peterson here, who, have, you, have any of you heard of Fres Freshly Picked? Yes, many of you have. So Susan Peterson is the CEO of Freshly Picked. And now, how, Anne, how do you, and you've got to flip it on. How do you say your last name? Arnig. Arnig. Okay, that's not as hard as I was thinking. So, <laughs> and she's a co-founder. Has anyone heard of So Delicious? Yes. <laughs> so she's the co-founder of that. And then you know Julie Hanks, her background, and she is the executive director and the founder of Wasatch Family Therapy. So quite different businesses here. And so what we're interested in doing, this group, um, if you read uh, the details of what, what we're doing is that you're just kind of thinking about it. You're aspiring, you want to do something, need some ideas maybe, thinking about how do we make this work with, all of you have children, right? And you started your businesses with children, right? And so sometimes we think, how do we do this with children? How do we maneuver and how do we get started? So I have asked each of them, first of all, to take about five minutes, and we'll start with Susan. And tell us about your entrepreneurship journey. How did you end up starting and owning a small business? And, and then why did you start it? Susan? That's a really good question. Can you hear me? Is, is that, that good? On? I don't think it is. Oh, was it? OK. okay. Um, so eight years ago when my son was born, I really wanted some cute baby moccasins for him that stayed on, that were leather, fit all these criteria. And there was literally nothing that I could find on the market for it. And so um, I had this bag of scrap leather that I had swindled out of a lady at a yard sale for a dollar and a really crappy sewing machine. And I was like, well, I'll make, I'll make baby moccasins. I can make him some moccasins. So I made moccasins. And um, at the time, I had a very unsuccessful Etsy shop and an equally unsuccessful blog. And um, <laughs> Yeah, and I would take product that I would make and I would put it on my blog and then put it in my Etsy shop and that's how I kind of learned how to use social media to sell product. And when I put uh, my moccasins on my blog, people went nuts. And by nuts, I mean I got 35 comments instead of two. So I knew I was onto something. <laughs> and. Uh, I, I, I actually honestly didn't think, oh, I'm going to sell these moccasins, but I had told my husband, Chris, if I could just find that product that, I, that would resonate with people, I know I could make a business out of it. And when the moccasins resonated with people, I, I was like, okay, I'll sell these. So I put them up in my Etsy shop, and they sold out, and I put them up, and they sold out, and pretty soon my bag of scrap leather was gone. And um, I went to the, fa or the leather store to get more leather, and um, the lady at the leather store, I, and, and previously with my Etsy shop, I'd go to the fabric store and I'd buy like a quarter yard of this and one notion and a little bit of this, and then I'd put it on my Etsy shop and then I'd sell it and then I'd go back and I'd buy a half a yard and two notions and a little bit of this. And um, I went to the leather store and I said, okay, I'll have a half a yard of this and a quarter yard of this. And the lady's like, you're crazy, you have to buy the whole cow. And I was like, what? And she shook it out and sure enough, a hide of leather looks exactly like a cow. There's a head, there's a tail, there's legs. And I was like, how much is that? She said $200. And I was like, I don't have $200 to my name. I mean, my dream in life is to be able to go to Target and spend whatever I want. <laughs> and so I went home kind of defeated because people were wanting moccasins. I had this product I knew people wanted to buy. So I convinced my brother to give me all of his old, so he owned, he owned at the time a window installation company. And they pull out windows, they put in windows. The windows they pull out are primarily um, made out of aluminum. So I convinced him to give me all his old windows, just drop them off at my house. And I spent a whole summer banging glass out of those windows. And at the end of the summer, I took all this aluminum scrap to the scrapyard, 
and I made $200 and I went back to the leather store and I put it on the counter and I got my hide of leather. I made 40 pairs of mocks and then I continued to reinvest in my business like that and that was eight years ago now, almost, yeah. So that's how, my, that's how my business started. So when did it really take off in a big way and how did you do that? So now, now she's got me interested. <laughs> every year it takes off oh, really? <laughs> and stretches me beyond really? what I feel is my capacity to do it. And I don't know, it never, it still is taking off in my mind. Like I'm not where I want to be. We have so much left to write in the business, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's a good story. Did you plan? So you didn't really plan this. No. Um, you just wanted good moccasins for your kid. And to go to Target and buy whatever oh, I wanted. that's true. That's true. <laughs> You've arrived. I've arrived. I saw so last I night, I went to Target, and I bought whatever I wanted. $32 worth. <laughs> Cha-ching. Lotion. <laughs> that's a great story. Um, and um, I have a background in film. So I spent 15 years after I graduated from college making costumes and designing wardrobe for film. So. Um, I had Etsy shops equally unsuccessful. I'm sure we all have, right? Um, and in fact, mine kind of paid my mortgage for a while because I'd be in my basement. It was a horrible life. I did not like that life, but um, I liked that I could control those elements. And as a freelance person, you kind of have to, it's a lot like a small business. You kind of have to hustle and save and just sort of know what you're doing at all times. Um, so I spent five years doing the Bible videos, designing those costumes for the LDS church, all that online stuff. And my husband was really wonderful and stayed home with our kids at that time, which was really great. <laughs> so he stayed home with the kids, and I worked really, really long, hard hours. And at um, the very last year, maybe the last month, we had this wardrobe team. We're out in the middle of the desert. It's like hot and barren and awful. And they do have craft service. They take very good care of us. but. They had cans of Coke. I didn't like Diet Coke at the time. I needed it, and I had to drink caffeine because I'd go home and nurse a baby all night and then come back to work. But um, anyway, so we'd make these drinks. We called them the wardrobe special, and it was, had the pebble ice, and it was a party cup, and it had the Tarani syrup in it, and it had whatever soda people wanted. And about 11 o'clock every day, we'd roll out this tray to set and you know, distribute wardrobe specials to everybody. So. A guy said to me, you know, this is a thing, right? Like, you could make a shop and people could drive through and get this drink with this cup and this ice. And we were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> why don't I have that, right? Because like, I would go to the gas station and get a drink every day of my life if I didn't have to get the two brats out of the car seat and take them into the gas station and fight over what they're going to get and fight over what I'm going to get and try to get us all back into the car. It, it is hard to... It's the worst, yeah. right? <laughs> Plus, it's like they didn't have the good flavors. It tastes like air freshener. They didn't have to get the ice. It was like none of it was good, but we had to have it. So... <laughs> I came home that night and we were stinky and hot and it was gross and I walked into my kitchen and my husband was sitting there and I said, so we're going to start a soap shop and he was like, oh, I mean, he was sweet and super supportive um, and now it's ironic because it's kind of become his thing, which is awesome and he's been a really great leader of the company, but that was how we started, just as this, it was intended to be just a little side venture and we found a tiny little 200 square foot shop. 250, if I'm generous with the space, oh, at the back big. of a barber shop on University Avenue in Provo. And we turned it into this drink shop and we opened it and it started hitting. And so that to us was a totally, it wasn't intended to be that. It was just really intended to, so that I could get my fix and my partner and when could was get that? fix. <laughs> we get all, when was that, that was in October of 2013. So, okay. and then we opened another one the next March and then they kind of Open. And how many kids do you have? And, and what are their ages? So that's a good story. I have three of my own, and we have two. My husband's sister's kids are with us, too. So 12 and 14, and then I have a 9-year-old and a 5-year-old and a 2-year-old. Okay. So, yeah. You've got Full all house. kinds of things going. We drink a lot of soda. <laughs> <laughs> so how many shops do you have now? And, and So um, we have our fourth just opened in Arizona yesterday. Oh, and then we have, um, I think we have 13. I'll have to count in my <laughs> head. We, I think it's 13. Uh, you have one at UVU. We do. It's somewhere <laughs> around here. I'm not familiar with UVU very well. It's, and so. it's, which direction? Are, is it that yeah. way? Okay, some of, some of the close. people in it's the audience. It's closed now. Exactly. It's only up until like 5. It's got a limited schedule. But it is, yeah, in the food court. That's so wonderful. And then tell us your kids' ages and how many you have. I have two. Uh, I have a 10-year-old and a 7-year-old. 
And so you started your business eight years ago. My so. son will be eight in like a month. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Thanks for that background. Julie. So the question was, what inspired you to start it? Yeah, tell us about your entrepreneurship journey. Yeah. And then how did you end up start or how did you end up starting and owning a business and why did you start it? Okay. <clears throat> well, it all started <laughs> when my parents took me to therapy when I was 14. And I had a, it was a life-changing experience, and I thought, oh my goodness, I want to. So why did they take you to therapy? No, yeah, I'm really. just joking. I'm well, so that's, joking. A, that's the after party. We'll, okay. give a, <laughs> we'll so get joking. some Soda Licious and put on some moccasins, and then we'll. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, so it was just, um, it was a life-changing experience, and I thought, and I'd always, I'm fascinated by people and motivation, and how come I have all these siblings, and we're so different, but we're kind of alike, and anyway, um, just kind of always thinking that way. So when I went to college, I studied psychology, and then just uh, knew that I wanted to, uh, to be a therapist, you have to have at least a master's degree, so, and my goal, so I had when I finished my bachelor's, I had our first child. We had our first child. And then I had my, our second in my master's program. And then I was raising them and worked um, under supervision with someone else like, for seven years, like I mentioned before. And my goal was I want to work part-time and make a full-time income. That was my target run. Was <laughs> I want to work part-time. I want to be the boss of my own schedule. I want to be able to still do my music and go to my kids' activities and volunteer at school. And, and so um, that was my goal. And I, so when my third was born, like that same month is when I filed all my, my um, business documents and started my own practice. And it just um, was just me, and then it grew over, over time. Well, that's, that's a wonderful story. Um, thank you for sharing that. And so the next question you've kind of covered already, but did you uh, plan to start your business early in life or did it emerge? It seems like it emerged for each of you. I mean, did, is this something when you were younger, you know, in high school or college you that you thought, no, not moccasins, <laughs> but start a business. Was that kind of in your mind at least? Was uh, that, did you even think that was an option? Because sometimes people don't even think that's an option. That's a good question. I didn't go to college. Okay. So I, um, yes and no, like, I don't like working for people. I don't like mm. rules. I don't like <laughs> people telling me what to do, <laughs> you know? Bosses. <laughs> yeah, bosses. Having to be somewhere. But um, I think the thing that I always comment on is, um, at, in high school, I could not have imagined the career path. I could not have imagined, oh, you're just gonna tell you my age, but a World Wide Web <laughs> where I was able to make money and have transactional things happen and a social media. I mean, the way in which business, the barrier to entry to start a business right now is zero. Like literally nothing. You can go and for free sign up for all these services. You can run credit cards and pay the credit card company to run it as it's being ran. I mean, there is no reason why if you want to start a business, you shouldn't start a business. And I always think of that saying, and I don't even know who said it, you maybe know. Um, Use what you have, do what you can, you know? And like, I think too many people think, oh, well, I couldn't, start a business because I don't have enough money to rent or I don't have enough, I literally had nothing. I convinced my brother to give me windows. And during nap time, I had a hammer that I think I borrowed from my neighbor and never gave back and banged glass out of a window. You don't have to have anything lined up. All you need, you don't even have to have your ducks in a row, just have a duck and say, eh, hope it flies, just go for it, you know? So one of the things, and I'll just combine the next question because you started it and I'll ask you to continue. So what, and then, then you too will have a chance. Um, but what are the benefits that you've seen for starting a business? You mentioned a few that you don't, 
want to follow other people's rules, mm -hmm. but what, what comes to mind? I mean, what are the benefits that you've seen in your life by running, starting your own business and running it? Oh gosh, benefits. Just anything, I mean, what are the good things? Yeah. That's yeah. a hard question, I feel like. Because it feels to me like a lot of the things that are benefits are also the downside, oh. right? Yeah. Like, like you think it's great because you don't have to go to an office and, um. but like, we, our work is never done, right? Like we go home and there's continues to be until we fall asleep this conversation. So I think that's sometimes there's good and bad, but it's kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. But you like working for yourself. I mean, that's a benefit, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I so mean, you have your own awesome. hours, your schedule. Um, but I think you're right. I, I've done a lot of working at home as well. And doing those that it's always there, right. it never ends. And then another benefit is like, oh, I'm the boss. And then it's like, oh, you're the boss. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do the really crappy like, boss What should we do, stuff. Susan? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm over there Googling, what does it mean to be a CEO? <laughs> don't look. I'm busy, guys. <laughs> don't look. <laughs> it's true. We Google what does a, a CEO do? <laughs> I'm like Trump in office right now. Oh, no. What does a president do? <laughs> <laughs> that's me. Oh and you can gosh. learn as you go. I bet that's another benefit that you do learn. Oh, yeah. I mean, you so don't, much. you can't be comfortable, no. right? I mean, and that's a good thing because typically women are, and Julie knows this from our practice, well, men too, we're happier if our mind is busy, if we're learning, if we're growing. So you get that opportunity. I bet that's uh, energizing in a lot of ways. Can I share something? Yeah. I didn't realize I was a business owner until about a year in. Like, I, I had a practice, but it's, therapists aren't trained to think in business terms. So I had to eventually go, oh my gosh, I, I'm a business owner. And and I probably should learn about this stuff. <laughs> so it's By just Googling like, oh, it. what was that? By Googling it. By Googling it. Now, it was pre-Google, so. <laughs> the Dewey Decimal oh, System no. over yeah, there? Really. Yeah, really. I'd go to, to the, the library. library. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't pre-Google, but, but the internet wasn't what it, what it is now. Uh, but it, I didn't even realize, like, oh, I guess I should start thinking like a business person, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. and, and so the crazy thing is, that oftentimes we don't know, as women, and men too, but more women, we don't know the resources that are out there. Mm -hmm. And so you're really in this aspiring thing, but you keep this flyer because these people, when you're ready to actually start, you can go to the Women's Business Center. They have so much help in writing business plans and resources on how to get funding and all of those. And then the Business Resource Center that's doing the third workshop, and don't get up and leave. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> or no bunt cake for you. Yes, there you go. Um, they are happy to welcome people in. They have free, but you probably didn't even know that there were those resources. Any comments about, you just, did any of you know there were those I did. Oh, I did went you? to some of those workshops, oh, did but you? for my unsuccessful Etsy businesses, <laughs> they were a little geared towards something else. So yeah, they're great resources, super helpful. I think, um, I love resources, but I think sometimes they can become a crutch because you think, mm. oh, hey, I just need to know this, or I just need to know this, and sometimes you use it as an excuse to not just, just get started. Just do it. Yeah, yeah and sometimes as women, Julie and I both speak about this, where women tend to be more perfectionistic. Mm -hmm. And so we want to wait. I mean, men will get, they know about half of what they need to do, and then they'll like, go for it. And women were thinking, oh, just another year. You know, I'll have it all together. You know, when my kids are at a perfect age, or when I know a little bit more. Have you, have you seen that as well? But you, you're just saying, you just dive in. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel that way. OK. Yeah. A lot of women do. Yeah. So You didn't feel? What way? Uh, like I needed to have all the answers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I still don't. Many women. I, yeah. My personality, I just, I learn by doing. Mm -hmm. Like I, I learn something by getting in there and going, oh, I need to learn this. And uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think I had to know everything. But I also feel inadequate a lot of the time. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, it's and you know the truth because you know the literature. Because I went to therapy when I was 14. <laughs> I can only say. I it. would just say that, like, I always, my parents taught us to hustle, and so, I mean, mm. in terms of entrepreneurial, I mean, we were always doing something to kind of earn money, and and I was the bread earner in our family. I yeah. I provided for us for like six or seven years. So, to me, I never felt like because I was a woman, I didn't have the 
tools available or the resources available. And maybe I was just surrounded by really like yeah. people that believed and and loved women. And and that's and, maybe why you're doing what you're doing is is you didn't have some of the barriers that many women. Yeah. Have. Yeah. And I feel like it's almost an advantage. Yes. To be a woman, a lot of the time, why? like well, for for about four years, I convinced. The men in the entrepreneur community that I was in tech, oh, and they'd be like, "Well, she's the only one here, and she says she's in tech." So, <laughs> guess we have Suckers. to believe her. <laughs> and I just have an online shop. I don't know anything about tech, <laughs> but you convinced them. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think we hustle. I mean, we work hard and it's harder to say no to us because we're don't like, I mean, yeah. when do you take no as an aunt? I never take that from my kids ever. So. Well, and all of you said, you know, that's true. You learned that from your kids <laughs> a lot. But all of you have failed at some point or another and you just keep going, right? I have met a lot of women. I work with a lot of women that just have one failure sometimes and just are really devastated by that. So. Did you, have you always, did you just grow up being okay with failure a little bit here and there? Or did you just, I mean, it kind of sucks sometimes, but then you just keep moving forward. I think you have what to define it? failure. Because yep. I don't, when I think, I'm like, I, I haven't failed. Not everything's worked out, but I don't frame it as a oh, failure. That's a good, that's right. A good. Like there were some months where I'm like, oh, my cash flow. Yeah, we have nothing in the, you know, like payrolls do. And. You know, where it's like, oh, I need to think about this differently next yeah. year when there's the, you know, so Christmas just, lull or whatever. Just challenges. Um, but I, I just, I don't know. I think, I think everything is, if you can grow from it, yeah. it's, not a, there's, it's not a failure. So any other benefits that, you, that came up while we were talking about that that you want to share? Or did you hit most of them? Yeah. I, Do you have something? Yeah, that I could set my own schedule, I could take time off whenever I wanted, we can go on family trips, I could take time to, off to you know, take care of a sick child, that was great. Uh, one of the, the huge benefits now I'm gonna, <laughs> is that I get to employ other women oh. and offer a flexible schedule and part-time or full-time. Is that rewarding to, for you? Oh my gosh, like I, yeah, I'm so passionate about providing a workplace that works for people's actual lives, and and our the philosophy is very relational. I'm I care more about their lives than I do about how much they're producing for my company, but they produce because they know that I care more about them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so I, just a story. One of my therapists said, you know, I'm, I'm pregnant. Um, how how much maternity leave do I have? And I just said. You know, what do you need? Oh. And it's just, we can be flexible, um, creative. And I think that that's a, a strength of, of being a woman, is that we have to weave different parts of our life no matter what stage we're in. And so we can do that. And, and I love helping people figure out what that balance is. That's wonderful. So the next question, Susan's kind of already answered, or you've really answered actually, and that is, how did you get funded? <laughs> how did you get funded, or what creative strategies did you use um, if you had minimal cash flow starting out? So uh, do you feel like you have anything, you've kind of told us about that, anything to add on that, or do you want to just throw it um, to the other two? No, I mean, still we're self-funded. Are you? Yeah, still to this day. Are you glad? I mean... Yeah. <laughs> yes. What She's was that totally about? Glad. I You're mean, glad. I go to my friends' companies who raise 11 million, and their oh. businesses look really different than mine. Um, I'm That's happy to own 100 percent. Like it's put me in a very. I have so many options mm -hmm. compared to other people, um, but I think uh, I it, I didn't I didn't. I, it, it wasn't that I raised, I didn't raise money because I thought I was trying to prove a point. I didn't understand it. Um, and so now I understand I have a really good grasp on mm -hmm. what it means and boards and percentages and all this stuff. And so I think like uh, we'll probably raise money this year. All okay. right. Thank you. So we started ours. We each couple put in $5,000. So we had $10,000 cash and then we put some on credit cards and that was enough to get us going, which was great. And then, um, so maybe to answer to the failure element, oh, we, we okay. had a pretty 
difficult failure in the breakdown of a relationship, right, of our partnerships, which is really hard and actually has been the most difficult, I think, uh -huh. I think in any of this business journey for me was to watch that kind of deteriorate. And these were people that I love and had years of relationship with. So because of where we were at with that, we really had to be creative with our funding, too. And so we have a, our, we have a partner who jokes all the time that he funds things with his brain <laughs> because he finds ideas and, and figures out really creative ways to take buy shops and to broker deals and, and ascertain leases, stuff like that, which is awesome. Um, and so in that regard, funding is, I've never been stressed about funding, but it's always been a ride of just like, I don't know what's gonna happen. It's fun, I guess. <laughs> it's not my specialty, obviously. <laughs> Julie, credit cards. I just started out small and grew slowly. Um, I remember my first office, it was an office share with a, a bunch of other health providers and therapists, and the rent was $300. And so my first- A month. A month, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just clarifying. Just for a little office, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a year. Um, and I just thought, okay, I have to make $300 this month to pay my rent pay my rent, right? So, you know, I just, I paid that, and um, yeah, I was, I made a lot more than that and kept, kept growing. So I've never taken out a loan or had any kind of outside funding. It's just revenue from the services that we provide. But I would say it's not bad to get funding, right? No, we just yeah. didn't. I, I didn't think, know. I, yeah. I never even considered it because I didn't need it. So. Yeah. yeah. And your husband uh, worked full time? Uh -huh. So you, you had a little bit of a luxury there right. in terms of, right. of just being able to move and emerge. And, right. Yeah. And I also was doing music and had income from that. Yeah. So, so. so I waited four years to pay myself. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's good to know. I yeah. never waited. You, you paid we yourself totally for waited. Oh, did right you? On. We waited. <laughs> but, but if it's a low month, I, I'm the one that doesn't get paid, right? But, yeah. but I try to make that never happen. So Julie, I'll start with you on this one. Um, and I think you've, you've mentioned part of it, but what continues to drive your ambitions now? I mean, why do you still do, is it money? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. No, it's <laughs> It is, it's well, it it's, should be part of it, but. Um, well, it, it is, like I else? like to get paid for yeah. work. Um, I have a great lifestyle. I go in, I go in two or three days a month, and oh. I don't see clients anymore, and I do all the, I work from home, and I am more of a leader than like a hands-on everyday kind of, kind of thing. And so it's grown to the point where I have a really flexible lifestyle and I get to do the things I want to do. Most of the work I do right now I don't get paid to do. But I But that's what your heart wants to do. Right. Kind of. Right. Yeah. Like you don't get paid to write a book until you've written a book and then several months later and if it sells and right? But it I have the luxury to do that or do spend, you know, I did two interviews today that took up probably five hours of my between preparing and all that stuff and I don't get paid for that. But I get to do things that I love. And last year, like this, is, this is really cool. I saw 52 theater movies last year. <laughs> like, I, and it was great. It's great. So I've built that flexibility that if I want to do that, I can. Um, and I get to be home at 3 o'clock when my kids are home and have always been able to just decide when my day ends. And... But I'm always working. Like I, I, I love know. working. Yeah. I love because it's it's not work. It's creating. It's creating something. Uh, but the mentoring right now is what I I love. I am all about lifting other women in whatever way I can, that whether it's business your, or yeah, love yeah. it. And then you talked about how you love employing other women yeah. and working with them. As and well. I love employing men too. Uh -huh. um, but my my heart. I think it's it's about like I want to give someone the opportunity. You know, I had the opportunity to work in a professional setting part time, and like I want to pay it forward, and uh, yeah, it makes me really happy. Yeah. Sorry, what's the question? The ambition. What what keeps you moving forward? I mean, what's your ambition that drives you to continue having a business? 
It's mostly the soda still. <laughs> Like for the very for the first little while after we started, my husband would say every day, "This could go away tomorrow, and we'd be fine." And I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, it totally can." And then I had a baby, and I was home, and every day at ten o'clock, I would be like, "Where's my soda?" I would call him, and he'd have to come bring me a drink. And so I realized it wouldn't be fine if it went away tomorrow. But I um, I think it's a lot the same things. I really like the team we work with. I like the things that I'm learning. I like the people that we employ and get to spend time with and get to know. And I. I just, I think I like, I like the process more than I thought I would because it's totally different than what I was doing. Great, Susan. Um, so mine has always been uh, to provide for my family and it still is and it's on a different scale now. Um, there's been circumstances recently where I'm providing, you know, supplemental income for a bunch of other people and like, I think, uh, and yeah, just provide for my family, make sure we're taken care of, and uh, long term and short term. Wonderful. My next question is, and you've we've touched on it, is um, that a lot of women do not like risks. We don't take risks as, uh, generally as as uh, often as men. Except some of the research is is uh, clear that believe it or not, this is why I think every young. Um, girl and boy, for that matter, should be in sports, whether it's recreational or serious. But athletes, women who have been in sports often or, or do speech and debate or things like that are often more likely to have a risk. And if you didn't do that or take risks, if you didn't do that, there's probably something in your life that gave you that experience. But many um, don't take risks. So do you feel like it was a risk to take it? Or the way that you're talking about it, it really didn't seem like a huge risk in the way that you did that. Um, any I thoughts love on risks. that? You love? Yeah. Oh, yeah. do you and like it? But it? it didn't, and I would say that it didn't feel like a risk when we were starting because we didn't know what we were starting, right? I think the uh, risk came for me when it was like, okay, I'm not gonna do that film anymore, and this, and it shifted to actually becoming uh -huh. our income, right? And, and becoming our path. That's, that's one so of So that was, to me, the risk where it was like, is this enough? But it, it kind of evolved, and so, yeah, but the risks are the fun. I think now I've trained myself, but we signed like one of our first real leases that we didn't negotiate in like a smoky back room for a couple hundred bucks a month, you know? But the real like lease, we went through a realtor and we signed some real lease and it was like, it seemed like so much money and I was terrified, like terrified that we weren't gonna be able to like maintain that. And, and I think about that now and that was just a fraction of the leases we do, you know? So it's yeah. like, I think you, you get better at it. Mm -hmm. You get more, a thicker skin for it. Yeah. But I, you like that challenge now. For that sure. Risk. Yeah. Okay. I think I still, I still have the risk just in the liability. Like all the therapists could leave, I'm on the hook for you know a couple locations for. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like I have yeah. to figure out how to make it work, even if everybody walked away. And so um, I, that's the risk, that, or you know get sued, malpractice, something. You know True. somebody does something because I'm not in in each session. I don't know. You know I'm trusting that they're doing good work um, and I hire people that I trust but so I'm that's the risk that I have is just I hold pretty much all the liability for what people are doing and um, the care they're providing and then for making sure that you know my name's on the lease nobody I'm a hundred percent owner so nobody else is but you're you're okay with it because you've taken that but yeah if, if, and I and I realize like oh I deserve to be paid for that okay so I think anyone that's had a baby has taken a big risk. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> I mean, you go into that hospital room thinking one thing and you come out a different person, right? <laughs> um, but I also feel like uh, as, as, um, as you take more risks, it becomes a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And I think fear is so good for your growth pattern. And I think like, just get down on your knees with that fear and just get used to it and get really comfortable with it because there's multiple kinds of fears and there's a fear that's telling you you're on the right path and there's a fear that's telling you, hey, stop. And you need to understand the difference between the two. That's a great comment, yeah. I'm realizing as, we're, as, as you're talking that I started performing at a pretty young age and that that yeah. 
is always a risk. And then I, as a teenager, I started writing my own music. And that's more of a risk, because it's like, here's my heart, and uh, you might like it, might not. And so I think that prepared me. So I'm really used to being terrified and then like moving forward anyway. You know, or being stressed out, or what? It's like okay, and and every single time before I put out a CD or a book or started my business or whatever, I have a total meltdown, like on the ugly cry on the floor, like why do I do this? Why am I complicating my life? Why do I put myself out there? And then, then you just do it. And then I'm like okay, and I I'm like why do I do this to my husband? And he's like because you want to make a difference for people. I'm like, OK, yep, let's go. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> you know? But it's just, it's always, it's vulnerable whenever you're doing something that is uncomfortable. Yeah. And what, what we know from the research, just so you know, is that it, it's people who were raised are raised differently. You had those experiences. Some of you, you, you know, have had the experiences. Some people haven't. I mean, some of us don't like, I was raised with six brothers, and I was an athlete, so I was out there too. But what the research is very clear about is that we can get better and better. We just have to step forward, do it, and know that if something goes wrong, we're going to live through it, and we're going to handle it, we're going to learn, and then you do it again. And um, it's so fabulous. I mean, I work a lot with women running for public office. That's a, one of the scariest places to be, is to get up there and have to self-promote. Yet, they learn so much even if they lose. And they're just so much better and confident, when, even when they lose. So it's interesting. So I'm just putting that out there, that if you're one of these people that are really nervous about, about that, you know, just move forward. If you don't do it, give yourself credit. Like, I did it. OK, it sucked, but I did it. And I can do this again. I know people in the audience are dying to know. I'm just going to bring up the work-life thing. And I don't want us to stay all rosy, um, because there are some hard things about, and you've already talked about kind of the benefits, because you get to have your own schedule. And, but you can talk more about those. But, but what are the hard things? What are, give me anything you've got. Who wants to start? This is an area of research for me. So this is like I could go on forever about this. So go ahead, and I'll, I'll think about a personal experience. <laughs> So what are the yeah pros and cons, and what are the hard things sometimes with doing business with, with young kids? I guess I don't know any different. I mean, oh. I've only ever had young kids in business. So to oh. me, it's just I can tell you the parts that I struggle with, and that would be like um, that I'm on calls and kids are yelling at me all the time, right? Like that they want your attention at that time. but. I kind of just, its that's my reality, and I sort of expect that the people that I'm dealing with and working with know that too and are going to forgive that, and I don't, I'm sort of not apologetic about it, I think. So, um, and it's important to me that I'm with those kids as much as I can be, and so I have help in the morning, and then I come home, and I'm with the littles for most of the day, and I work from home, and, and it just happens. I don't so know. It's so it's just good the way it is. Yeah. So I don't know the last time I was home before 7 p.m., honestly. Like, it's a lot. I work a lot. I work long hours. I'm at the office a long time, but we're in, it's not always like this. We're in a growth pattern right now. Um, and I have a lot of help, and I love my housekeepers, and I love my nanny, and I moved my parents in, and I have really just set up this life. And my husband also stays home. And we only have two children, but they thrive in the environment that we've created. And I honestly don't think that work-life balance, I know you didn't say the word balance. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't believe in it. I think it's a myth. It, and um, what I try to do is I try to step back and uh, look at periods of my life in a grander scheme than just a day. Because if you judge it by a day, you're always going to feel like, oh, I sucked today. I didn't make the bed before I left, and I didn't pick up my hair stuff. And like, you make you, the bed? <laughs> I, almost every <laughs> morning. The, the housekeeper <laughs> makes the bed. No, I make my bed. It makes me feel very accomplished. <laughs> but um, I like to look at a month, and I like to think, did the things that I prioritized, the, the things that I say I prioritize, did they, ri did they rise to the top? Did I spend enough time with my children? Did I do enough 
uh, like one on one time with my husband. Do I feel like but but, but a month? Leo. Yeah, look at oh, it. Okay. Look at it in a month chance. or like mm. or a quarter if you have to. Like give yourself three months. But I, I think like if you try to distill it down to like minute by minute, hour by hour, you'd drive yourself crazy because it just you cannot be everywhere. You can't be everything to everyone. And I have a lot. Like when I step back and I look at all I'm shouldering, I'm like, oh, that's a lot. So you but, give yourself some credit. Then. Yeah, give give yourself some credit. Give yourself a break and go see a massage therapist. Is that, is Get that your nails key? done. <laughs> That's great, right? Right. I have appointments tomorrow. Yeah, with both of them. <laughs> oh, do you? I do. <laughs> it's my it's my relaxing day tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I I, um, I don't make a distinction between work and life because. I only do the things I want to do, and so it's not really, I mean, you know, I don't go into the office very often, but I'm, I'm up writing, you know, till two in the morning. Like, I'm, I'm producing, but I don't think of it as work because it's what makes me feel alive. And so I don't, it, it's just weaving, it's just life, right? And it's, it's relationships, and it's family, and it's just kind of this big, big thing and we, we try call to it in the literature actually years ago when I was doing my dissertation my, my dissertation was work and family conflict and telecommuting and the Ooh. link so I was one of the first to ever explore cool. that I know I want to read it so, but but during that time we really stopped really talking more about the balance and moved it to work-life integration. That mm -hmm. if you're always looking for this balance, it's just never there. And sometimes you just want to work more, and sometimes you just want to be there for well, your kids more. Well, and they more. never ask men that question. I know, it's right? true, it's true. How do you balance having so two dumb. kids and a job, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, that sounds ridiculous. He has a wife. I'm looking for a second one. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's, that, is the, that is the challenge and the research um, yeah. bears this out is that women have moved into paid employment a lot faster than men have taken more responsibility at home. And you know, it's the second shift is what it's called, right? So both are working all day and then, yeah. you know, the wife, husband get home and she's doing all the other stuff. And I know it's changing now, um, but there's still a big lag be behind what men feel um, responsible, like that it's their thing instead of like yeah. helping, helping out, pitching in. No, it's our house. This is, we all need to eat. <laughs> you know? So kind of, it's important to reframe but it. And we've had to do that a lot because. The, and there's two sides to that. I, I happen to know the literature on that. And part of that is men not seeing that, but part of it is I'm the mom, I wanna do this, but I still feel like I'm, and, I, and I'm not, not me. But I've, I'll say it, it's not really me. I still, women still say, what, but I'm supposed to be the one to cook dinner. I, I'm, I have given up cooking dinner a long time ago. <laughs> well, well, I just assemble now. We've been socialized <laughs> to integrate that into our identity. Yeah. And, and so, so I've had to not. disintegrate that from my, <laughs> like, to go, I am not my house. So I am not have, my food. I am not my. <laughs> Well, in our minds, we have what a good mom looks like, right. yeah. and we str have struggled with that throughout. I'm just looking at the time. I want to give a few minutes for questions, and then we have an activity uh, that we're going to do at the end. Uh, so I'm just going to ask you a couple questions as we conclude, and then give you just a, a minute to, to ask a few questions, and then we'll move on. So this one's a quick one, but we'll see how quick you can answer. <laughs> so what are the three talents that you say that, that you know that you have that you think are making you successful what are the three characteristics talents you think rise to the top i know you're all like looking up that like, is not a quick question yeah, like, i know it's like, quick when you say it right but what um so for i'll just say me, and I've had my own businesses. I'm a flippin' hard worker. I am up, if any of you have emailed me, you'll get emails at four o'clock in the morning. I am a hard worker, and I will take risks, because I'll put myself out there. So that, that's an example. Who's got it? Who wants to take the? <laughs> I have two. Okay. <laughs> I am really disciplined. I think I'm really good at meeting deadlines and getting stuff done and sort of having a calendar in my head of always knowing what I have to do. And um, 
I'm also really good at knowing what I'm not good at and what oh. I don't want to be doing. And so I can, I can steer myself out of those circumstances where you end up d spending your day doing things that, like running Etsy shops from your basement. Sorry, I'm trying to look at the time, and I hit uh, Siri there. Oh, um, okay. So <laughs> 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 I can't see the clock. The, the, I'm right in front of the poll. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got it, actually. It's 40, 44, so we're doing OK. Um, so that's great. Who else? Who wants to be? If you think of a third, you can pitch it in. I would say I'm scrappy and dumb. Oh. And I, I'm not dumb like, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. But I really don't. And I think that it's actually good to not know how to do something because you figure it out and you maybe try it in a way that hasn't been tried before. And whether right or wrong or fail or win or whatever, um, you learn something. And I mean, the way that I built my business was totally counterintuitive to the way that anyone has built their business. In fact, as we're talking to people, they're like, wait, you did e-com first? That's incredible. And it was just because I was dumb. I didn't know another way. And so I think that what you don't know is actually really good because then things come intuitively. Oh and they God. don't feel like risks because you don't know any different. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So Not they're just saying go for that's it. Yeah. That's, Julie, what would you? Um, I, I care deeply about people. Yeah. Like and the relationship aspect, and I think that's that's a strength. I'm tenacious, so it's different than rebellious, although I can be that too. But it's like I can picture. I that. am going to figure out a way to get what I want. <laughs> you know, I and I just I'm willing to kind of put in the time over the long haul to get it. And I'm also really true to myself and my heart. Like if there's, if I feel like, okay, I need to go this direction, I, I do that and I, I'm not swayed by other opinions. Any others that you've thought of? Or you're good. You're <laughs> call us too. All, All right, the last, the last question that I have for you is just, I mean, as you're looking out to this wonderful group of women and I think we have one man, thank you for coming, <laughs> um, who's supportive of women, I can see. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, what we've, you've kind of been giving some advice, but what would you conclude with? Maybe just take a, you know, 30 seconds or so, and what, what do you think, what advice would you give to these folks who are thinking down the road, kind of aspiring to do something? Uh, what, what would you say? I'm gonna let I would say just take one, focus on one step. The, what's the next step? It might be researching you know, what kind of uh, corporation to form, or it might be just one step. It's so easy to get overwhelmed by the big picture, like, oh, you know, I want to do this. Oh, it's too much, too much. Like, you may have, you know, if you'd known how successful and you were oh, thinking, yeah, I quit. like, you would have, it's too scary. It's just but like just if like, you knew how your kids were at three, you wouldn't have them, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So I would just say take one step towards your goal. And, and in my therapy office, a lot of clients will say, I don't know what I want to do. I'm like, just pick something and take a step and then go, oh, I like that or I don't. And then you take another one. Just take a step toward what you think you want. And that's the, that, that I mean, people just don't stay, take any steps. They don't move right. until they any think it's perfect. Any step is better than none. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Okay, two things. I would say um, we have a friend, Colton, who's a really good chef, and he always says done is better than perfect. And that to me is like, that sort of changed my um, perspective on life, because it's like nothing's ever gonna be perfect, right? So as long as it's done enough, then that's gonna be way better than what you can ultimately get it to, because you won't get it there. Um, and then the other thing I think that's been the critical element for us is, uh, and for me, has just been to surround myself with good people. And I think um, their life is short, and you're going to spend your time with people either that you get to choose and you like and get along with, or that you don't get to choose. And I think that's sort of why I think we kind of were motivated to start a business, because we didn't want to be <laughs> tied to other people. But... Um, but the luxury of choosing the people that you get to spend your days with and who you get to learn from and who gets to teach you and who you get to teach is pretty magical. So I think that let that be a motivator for you. Okay, so 
there are two books I think every person who's starting a business has to read. The first one is E-Myth, or E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. It is fantastic if you're starting a business, if you're already going on a business, if you're like, I am going to drown because of this business, read this book, it will change your life. The second one is called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And he talks a lot about resistance, which is um, any element or anything that kind of feels like, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing that and how to push through that. And then, so those two books, I would say, if I could go back in time, I'd say read these, study these, read them once a year, they're vital. The second thing that I've done recently that I wish I would have done years ago, I used to do it and then I kind of gave up, um, is, um, but I started again, um, carve out about two hours for yourself every day. It is life changing. I get up at five, no one in my office is awake, my kids are all in bed, my husband's snoring, I study, I go for a hike, and I have time for myself, I have time to think, I have time to reflect, I leave so much of, so much of my problems on the trail, I just like, just give yourself time to reflect and give yourself time to do something you love. Thank you, isn't that great?